Live from WJHG, this is News Channel 7 Today. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us. I'm Mel Zosh. Welcome to News Channel 7 Today. Panama City Beach Police Chief J.R. Telementes is on paid administrative leave this morning. Chief Telementes has served Panama City Beach since May of 2021, and we have learned about an investigation he's involved in. It's been just over six months since tornadoes tore through the panhandle, leaving destruction in their path. As News Channel 7's Austin Maida tells us, two local marinas took major damage, and now they're building back. If you're looking for a way to stay cool and have some fun at the same time, a festival in Walton County might be the getaway trip you've been searching for. A public forum and vote was held last night regarding a long-standing ordinance prohibiting mobile homes in a specific Jackson County neighborhood. The forum was held at the offices of the Jackson County Commissioners in Mariana. Last night, residents packed into the commission meeting to hear more about what happened at the festival. During the commission meeting, officials didn't say much about Soul Festival, but the Holmes County Sheriff, John Tate, spoke about going over budget. She says it's also important for caregivers to care for themselves as well, since the job of caring for another can get overwhelming. And you know what? Self-care is a good idea, really, for anyone out there. And taking a walk, getting outside can be a great way to lift up your spirits. Let's check in now with Ryan to see how the weather's looking for those outdoor activities, Ryan. Gulf World Marine Park in Panama City Beach offers visitors and locals alike the chance to swim with a dolphin. Recently, okay. Jessica, myself, our morning producer, Matt, we all had the chance to do just that. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this edition of Morning Extra on the WJHG website. I'm your host, Mel Zosh. I really appreciate you joining us today. We're almost to the weekend. It's now Thursday, June 20th. It also happens to be West Virginia Day. I lived in the Mountain State for almost six years from 2017 through 2023. So definitely celebrating some uh, West Virginia fun today. And by the way, a big food there is pepperoni rolls. If you've never had one, definitely recommend that you look up a recipe and make your own pepperoni rolls. Well, anyway, we have a lot to talk about this morning. We're going to start with some local headlines. We love to feature local musicians as part of today's tunes, and we are doing just that. We are featuring Gage Cower, and he has a fascinating story and an inspirational one of how he became a musician. And Gage, we were talking on the break, and you didn't start picking up the guitar when you were a child or even a teenager. You started just a few years ago. Yes, ma'am, that's right. So share your story with us. <laughs> Oh, it is now 6.13. It's time to take a look at what's going on in today's talker. I was thinking about some food and I got distracted. I'm sorry. I really zoned out there. Wow, okay. Like, little case of the moon days wow. on a Thursday. It looks Seriously. Like oh, okay. Redo. It is 6.13. It's time to take a look at what's going on in today's talker, Ryan. I know what happened. <laughs> you were consumed in your mind. With vanilla milkshake day. You're wrong. I was thinking about pepperoni rolls because it's West Virginia day. Oh. <laughs> but vanilla milkshakes too. We'll talk about the pepperoni rolls in a minute. This is all about the milkshakes right now. <laughs> the Food Trucks of America Festival. We have Aaron Pecky joining us all the way from New England. Yes, it's just going to be so fun, isn't it? Yeah, we're firing up. It's exciting. Uh, it's the event of the year. You need to be here. Well, we are learning how to put together a new dish for this edition of Foodie Friday. Joining us is Chef Robert Alexander from Polished Chef. And we have some fresh ingredients here, some peppers, limes, cilantro, some sugar, olive oil. What are we making this morning? <laughs> so this morning, we're making some tuna tartare. Uh, but we're going to do it two ways. So we're going to show you how to sear some tuna. Um, and how to uh, prepare it raw as well. Okay, I'm ready to learn, Chef. So what, what's the first step here? Mel, I know you're pumped about this. Oh, I'm so excited. So noon to six for both days, there's going to be beer, uh, more than 30 food trucks, a lot of local varieties, and we're excited to try uh, this food this morning. Yeah. We've had so much fun eating all of the oh, food. Are you full? We, we have. It's been fantastic. Yes, I am full, but I can squeeze a little bit more in before the yeah. end of the show. We've got Frank and Lola's hot dogs. Yes, noon to six, both days. Have a great day, everyone. All right, thank you so much, Megan. Well, when you think of fall, you may think of carving a pumpkin, attending a festival, or maybe throwing a Halloween party. Well, we have another idea for you. It involves getting up close and personal.
with a dolphin. Gulf World Marine Park in Panama City Beach offers visitors and locals the chance to swim with a dolphin. Recently, morning anchors Jessica Foster and Mel Zosh had a chance to do just that. In this week's Spaces and Places of the Panhandle, we show you what you can expect if you book this rare opportunity to swim with a marine animal. Her name is Sandy, and she is our largest female here at the park. She is also what we call our matriarch, so that means that she runs the show. She is the queen bee of Dolphin Stadium, as we like to say. So Sandy is our largest female, tipping the scales at around 500 pounds. That fluctuates throughout the year, so during the winter she will put on a little more blubber to stay nice and warm. But in the summer she's going to slim down with what I call her bikini body. But she's averaging about 500 pounds. Uh, she's also close to 10 feet in length. It's an incredible experience to meet a dolphin in the water. It's one of my favorite parts of my job is getting people like you guys who have never met a dolphin before to meet them for the first time, to see their eyes light up, to see just the biggest smile on their gray, you know, their face. It's my favorite part. It is something that is indescribable to be in the water. You showing your best side? You showing your best side. with these incredible animals that are 500, 400, 300 pounds, but you really get to see the gentle side of them where you get to see that hug or even those kisses like you guys got to do. You get to see the grace and power, but you also get to see how sweet they can be too. They actually don't have vocal cords like you and I, so they manipulate the lip of that blowhole. I like to think of it as when you make a balloon, make that sound. It's kind of that same way. So there's actually air sacs around that blowhole, and that helps her manipulate that blowhole to make thousands of different sounds. You guys happen to hear my favorite sound in the whole world today, and that is Sandy's giggle. She always laughs at my jokes. <laughs> So she's estimated to be late 30s, maybe even early 40s. And we are their second chance at life. Without us here at Gulf World, they're not gonna survive out in the Gulf of Mexico. So not only are we giving them a chance at that second life, but we're also giving them veterinary care, five-star restaurant quality fish. Literally around the clock, our vets are, have their phones on them. So if anything happens, we're there for them. So not only are they getting that second chance at life, but they are also getting the best care that they could ever ask for. They live much longer here with us under professional care at Gulf World, other facilities like that as well. Out in their natural environment, the Gulf of Mexico, the average is about 18 years old. And that sounds like a lot, but listen to this. In facilities like Gulf World, they're averaging into their 30s, 40s, 50s. So all of our behaviors, the very first thing they learn is called a target, which is what you guys did where you placed your hand out and they actually touched the tip of their rostrum to that hand. So that's how we shape or form all of our behaviors. But then we can also train for a variety of different reasons. The number one most important reason that we train is for their medical or husbandry behaviors. So our husbandry behaviors are the most important part of our day, whether it be for that blood layout or an ultrasound. If we were to ever have a dolphin become I'm pregnant we can look at that and monitor we can also do gastric behaviors uh, chuff so we can actually see what's going on with their lungs so those are the most important things being here for over 30 years she's accumulated a lot of behaviors she does have one of the largest behavior lists that we have my personal favorite because I feel like that's gonna be the next question is she wants to do something called a back reach so she'll actually come up in a sea and land on her back it is so impressive people always go crazy for it in our presentations and it just really shows how athletic and just incredible she is How did we do today? You guys were rock stars. <laughs> Absolute rock stars. You guys got the rides, you guys got the poses. We'll put you in the next show, okay? <laughs> okay, <laughs> we can do it. <laughs> Three, down and up. Check it out, it's like a shield. Myself and Sandy today. I hope you guys had as much fun as I did. Yeah. So thank so you guys fun. so much. Thank Enjoy you. the rest of your day. Thanks, Hallie.
Faces and Places of the Panhandle is sponsored by Wettermark Keith, personal injury lawyers. Well, if you're interested in swimming with Sandy or another dolphin at Gulf World, you can visit GulfWorldMarinePark.com. There are also special discounts for Florida residents next month through February 2024. Well, if you're looking for a place to grab a bite to eat for breakfast or even lunch, we have an idea for you. It's a restaurant franchise that started hundreds of miles away in West Virginia in 1980. But you don't have to travel that far to try their food. News Channel 7's Mel Zosh and Kivion Goss take us on a trip to an eatery in Panama City. Now, Mel moved from West Virginia this summer, so she shows Kiwi the inside story of why this restaurant is so popular in the Mountain State and now here. It's part of this week's Faces and Places of the Panhandle. All right. I'm Oops. so excited. We're here, Kiwi. I can't wait to show you what they have to offer, all West Virginia style. Hey, I'm from Kentucky, so you know, we know some good food. Panama City knows good food as well, but I'm excited for this. All right, well, I'm excited too. Let's go. Let's do it. But before we order our food, I'm very curious. Oh, man, How did a Tudor's Biscuit World end up in Florida? A lot of people that um, either live here that are from West Virginia or visiting from West Virginia, uh, they've actually stopped in and told us they've almost wrecked when they saw the sign to, to get in here. Uh, one Mickey meat coming up. As for this husband and wife duo, their sign to open their own restaurant came with a leap of faith and a desire to become their own bosses. Those dreams came to fruition in May 2016 when they opened Florida's first and only Tudor's Biscuit World on West 23rd Street in Panama City. Prior to that, I mean, we didn't have any sort of restaurant experience. Neither uh, one of us never even worked in a restaurant, ever. Yeah. Nick Scherzinger and Kara Petinato met at college in Pittsburgh. Nick is from West Virginia. Kara is from Pennsylvania. Uh, Pinto's brought up. And Nick is no stranger to the panhandle. He vacationed in this area oh, with his family doing? long very, very before easy. opening a restaurant was even a thought in his mind. And Nick and Kara's previous lives were a world away from their current ones. Yeah, we were in a totally different world before <laughs> before we started this. And when we started, a lot of our employees actually taught us stuff. We had an awesome team. We have um, people that have been with us since day one, so seven years ago, through the hurricane, through COVID. Um, we have a, a great team that really works together. Um, you won't ever hear any of them say, that's not my job or that's not my duty today. And when duty calls, it's all hands on deck. Or in this case, the kitchen, yep. drive through or the dine-in line. Are y'all going to be dining in or taking it to go today? All righty, what can I get started for y'all? And as for the most popular item on the menu? Biscuits and gravy. We it's cook delicious. our own pork sausage in our gravy, so that one make, makes it a little bit different than other people. And you'll find the Mountain State has definitely left its mark on the menu. Obviously, the Thundering Herds, Marshall, and uh, the Mountaineers, West Virginia University, but uh, the uh, and we have the Miner Biscuit because we're known for coal mining. And every customer who walks in the restaurant sees smiling faces to greet them and make them feel right at home whether they're in West Virginia or right here in Panama City, Florida. Faces and Places of the Panhandle is sponsored by Wettermark Keith, personal injury lawyers. The restaurant is open every day except Sundays and Mondays from 6 a.m. until 2 p.m. Besides the location in Panama City, Tudor's Biscuit World also has locations in West Virginia, Kentucky, and Ohio. For many teachers, spending their days in the classroom isn't just a job, it's also a calling. And that's exactly how one teacher in Calhoun County feels. I traveled there recently to meet this week's Golden Apple winner. This is Alpha Public School. Here you'll find students in pre-K through 12th grade, about 660 of them to be exact. What else? Anybody else? We'll do one more. Uh, Avery, what did you see? And inside Mr. Austin Roberts' classroom, there are 16 first graders, all eager to learn. I love being able to teach the littles and, um, and help them become better readers. That's, that's what I love to do. And the littles really seem to respond to Mr. Roberts' teaching style. He always makes fun activities and he always has an idea to make it where learning is also fun. 
Oh, that makes the difference. Why do you like Mr. Roberts as your teacher? Because he makes us learn a lot. He's really sweet and he helps us a lot if we need help. I, I know what my students are going through because I've done the same exact thing, you know. Um, so it's, it, it's, it's really rewarding to be back here. This, this is home to me. I spent 13 years as a student here, K-12, um, and then I, I came back to sub and um, I, I just, I always knew that I wanted to work here. This is Mr. Roberts' second year of teaching first grade here, and he's already been recognized as Alpha Public School's Teacher of the Year. He's here early, one of the first ones here, one of the last ones to leave. Um, very passionate about his job. He just, he's very compassionate with his kids, and they know that he cares about them. Because to Mr. Roberts, teaching is more than a job. Our students, you know, I feel like they need someone who cares about them and someone who loves them and um, someone who will advocate for them and give them skills they can take with them throughout the rest of their life. So that was, you know, I, I wanted to be that person for my students. And it's his passion and love for his 16 little students that makes Mr. Austin Roberts a Golden Apple winner. The Golden Apple is brought to you by Bill Kramer Certified Service Express and the St. Joe Community Foundation.